it was June 12th, 2022, and just finished up a day here on the shooting range. Really a nice, nice day out. Yeah, a little, little misty rain earlier on, but wasn't a problem here in the, in the shooting shed. And what we had going on today was we had a couple of comments, or at least one for sure, on some videos. And the fellow was wondering how the 451 and the 454 round ball would compare when shooting out of the uh, out of the Pieta guns. So I thought, well, that's interesting. Let's. Uh, I've not, not really done a comparison of the two. I know they both both shoot well. I kind of prefer the 451 just because it goes down a little easier. These are a, are about a 446 uh, chamber, so we're still taking. Uh, three or four thousandths of lead on those things. I do use lube in the end of the chambers and I'm not too worried if the flat of the ball actually gets on the side then because that that will take care of it. So I think today we answered that that questions and we're going to go through the uh, video there go through the shooting on the video here and there a question that that uh, arose is that a lot of fellows figure that maybe the or some fellows figure at least that the the lube gets blown out of the out of the end of the cylinder, so it doesn't really much do much, or the end of the chamber, it doesn't do much good anyway. And so to lube the cylinder up on the end of the chambers is really unnecessary, or at least isn't, isn't working. They prefer the wads for that reason. So we did do a, a check here towards the end of the video after we shot um, some of the cans down range, and we checked to see whether or not that was, was actually the case or not. So those are the couple things that we addressed today on our shooting, and um, we'll kind of show what happened there. We'll be shooting the 451 Lee cast and the 454 Lee cast, but we probably should compare those to the 451, for instance, here that's a swaged uh, round ball and just kind of take some measurements off of this thing to start with, and then we'll take some measurements off our, our cast um, ones here. So let's start with the swaged round ball. Now, a subscriber mentioned that uh, these things aren't necessarily completely uniform just because they're swaged, and I never really thought much about that. Anyway, here's a 4.52 diameter, cross it that direction. Rotated it some, getting a 4.52, 4.53 reading on that spot, spot on it. Rotated it some, getting a 4.52, possibly a 4.53, switching back and forth on that section of the swage ball. Rotated it again, and this time I'm getting 4.54 across that spot. And back to 4.52. Now there's an interesting section. I'm getting four five five. One important thing is that this thing is not running less than than four five one. Um, don't see any sections that were were under the the four five two actually mark on the on the ball. Now on the four five one cast will have a slight flat spot right here where it's uh, coming out of the bullet mold, and I'm guessing that's going to measure less than the four five one. Let's put the caliper on that and see what what that comes out at. And so here that measurement is 444 and our chamber diameters in the pit are around 446 so if measurements are correct here that's going to leave a little gap possibly where a flash could um, go past the ball and into the into the actual powder and, and set off a chain fire that's if we don't have some kind of a lube on the chamber ends or possibly in there inside out over the powder we have a wad placed which um, hopefully would um, would stop that flash the other way of getting around that would be to load that flat spot up on the chambers and then that shouldn't uh, shouldn't cause a problem. Picking a different spot on the ball, I'm getting a 453 across there. Let's take a couple more measurements. And here's one that I'm at 454 and a 453. And here's a spot that's measuring 452. That's no guarantee that my um, calipers here are 100%, but it's pretty uniform from going from the swage round ball to the to the uh, cast one. So I'm seeing um, pretty much the same same set of diameters, and the cast one is running pretty much as uniform as the as our swage one is over here, except for our flat spot across where it's cut off from the from the bullet mold. Well, here's a 454. Again, there's a flat spot where the uh, mold. Uh, cuts off the excess lead from the top of the ball where it's cast. Well, let's measure that one first. And here we're getting a 449. So on a 446 four, uh, chamber, we'd have a 2 or 3,000 there to, 
to mess with in case we did happen to load this one along its edge on that uh, flat spot. So far 454, round ball, different section here. I'm getting a 456 measurement. Turned it, another 456. And again this time a 457. So we're within a uh, couple thousands and again they're over over the 454 as advertised. So a couple things on the 454. Did mention that it's probably going to be harder to put down the chambers, but because it's a little larger, um, the area of the flat spot here uh, shouldn't uh, create any gaps on the side if you happen to load it that way. So getting a little extra safety margin there for the difference in in difficulty just to load that. And some folks will believe, or actually feel that that the larger section here that than actually where the lead is shaved off gives us a better seal and possibly even a better chance for the rifling in the barrel to, uh, to grip that ball and making sure that it gets its, its necessary spin to stabilize. So a couple of other factors there that you might consider if you're going to shoot the 4.5 uh, four, four round ball. So I'll be interested in seeing if the 4.5 Four actually uh, markedly outshoots the the four five one as far as grouping ability goes. Also, be interesting to see where they where they shoot on the target. Uh, does the four five four hit higher, lower, or or how's that going to work out? And kind of to do this, what I'll do is I'll load the chambers and I'll alternate between a four five four five one and a four five four, and back to the four five one. I'll have two targets posted and shooting back and forth between the two of them. Hopefully, that's going to eliminate. Um, any kind of call it unfairness or whatever from one ball to the next if I shot a full cylinder of one my next cylinder would already have already have some falling on it and that might affect where it's gonna where it's gonna shoot or even the accuracy so that's why we're loading alternating the chambers between the 451 and the 454 round balls so with that said we'll load up our uh, Pieta 1858 uh, replica of an 1858 we're gonna be using 20 25 grains of the um, black MZ powder in there and of course the balls we're talking about here and I will put lube on my end of my chambers because that's kind of the way I shoot and I'm used to doing it that way so alright let's get this thing loaded up and see what it'll do so for powder we'll use our black MZ which is a substitute powder and one of the reasons we're doing that is because the regular stuff is getting kind of hard to go and I've had just good luck with this stuff so I'm not doing a comparison of powders here so we're just going to use the black MZ straight through 25 grains of that in the uh, 44 calibers and along with that we're going to use uh, Remington number 10s on the percussion cap so we'll get those loaded up and, and start shooting see what they do. Now we got a mark on our cylinder so we know which chamber was the 451 so we know how to start. You know, there's the ring of lead that shaved off from a 451 next chamber up would be a 454 let's see what that one looks like. There's our 454 one and definitely got a little more thickness to it, I suppose I got our thousands, two thousands around the, around the rim on those, so that's what we're seeing the difference. Some are probably thinking that background noise is my wife mowing the shooting range with the lawnmower, but it turns out it's a rock tumbler, kind of working on uh, some homemade uh, black gunpowder. Here's a look at the inside of the chambers after I use my lube gun on those and notice one here that not filled out right there so we're going to hit that one again looks like the ball is squeezed tight to the side so I don't think I get any gas blow by causing the chain fire on that one but we're going to hit that a little more and here's looking at our chamber that had a little spot there where the lube wasn't in there we added a little more to it and I think it's pretty well covered now Okay, ready for our first string of six. First shot's gonna go on the right target. That'll be a four, five, one round ball. And then we're gonna alternate back and forth. So let's get the shooting up.
All right, we're set up for our second string of six. Should put three more holes in each target. If it works out right. All right, we're loaded up our third cylinder with six. Okay, this will be four string, so we'll have uh, 12 rounds in each target when this is done. I should probably should quit where, where I'm at because i got some halfway decent looking groups down there, but so far really no flyers out of those uh, 18 shots, so we'll see what these next and final six will do. Well, 24 shots, 12 with the uh, 454 and 12 on a 451. And I have to say that the 454 round ball maybe did a little better, uh, but really can't tell because they're both uh, decent groups for 12 shot groups. This one had a one and a half inch horizontal spread, about a two inch vertical for all 12 shots. And if I discard my one up here, that was the first shot of my fourth string, if you can do that. And then we had about one and a half, same on the horizontal, and a little more on the vertical with these. I think they're two shots, two shots down here. So, so that's what we got for our comparison of the 451 and the 454 round ball there. Um, both seem to do real well on this. This Piata gun, this is a copy of an 1858 Remington or sort of a copy of a, a Remington gun. It's got a 1 30 inch twist and I think these chambers measure around 4, uh, four, four 6 on the, on the chambers and of course it's a 44 caliber barrel. So anyway, a good time shooting those and, and hope that um, this has been worthwhile doing. So I've loaded up 4 or 5, 1 round ball. This time they're easier to go down and they shoot me just as well. I didn't pay much attention to the to the uh, orientation of the ball as far as that flat spot goes on the side, but I did cover with quite a bit of lube, so I think we're good to go. Let's see if we can have a little can action here. Let's see if we can get any of those cans down there. Get the camera going and we'll have a look at our lube and see how that's blowing out. I'm going to try to not shoot myself in this process here. So here's a look at the end of the chambers here. This would be the position the gun was in when it first of all fired and that's our chamber that went off first. And we had lube on, on, these, on these other three here. Okay, so this one went off and I'm not really seeing a lot of change. 
and the one next to it here. Of course, this one we can't see what happened there because it's gone. So is this one, so is this one. But our next one, when this this chamber down here fired, the next one to go off would be this one. So he was sitting right, I can kind of turn this up here. He was sitting right there. And like I say, this chamber here is the one that fired. And I'm not really seeing any any issues here with the lube down there. I mean, if I had a lot of lube in there, let's say I put a good quarter inch or three eighths in there, I think a lot of that would be blowing away, but it stays down in there, it seems to stay down in there to me in the crevice between the ball and the side of the chamber, so I don't think that that idea that all the lube is blowing away is not proven out, at least from what I can see here, so. All right, let's put this baby back in the gun and get those last two uh, chambers to fire. six shots and those were four five one so they didn't get any misses out of those things I think I think they're shooting just fine <laughs> 